Well, hello there, folks. This is Lyage, and welcome to a Monster Hunter Rise playstyle guide. In this series, we will be exploring unique and interesting ways to play each of the game's 14 different weapon types. In each video, I will be covering a specific build or playstyle for a given weapon that may just make it feel completely different. Whether you've played the weapon for 100 hours or are picking it up for the first time, you might just discover a cool new way to play. As a disclaimer, these videos will not be full weapon tutorials. I will be going over a few key techniques and combos relating to the particular playstyle, but to learn about everything a weapon has to offer, there are already some great tutorials out there. I am also not claiming that any of these playstyles will be the most efficient ways to play, but I have the hope that they will provide a fun change of pace for your hunts. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. Well folks, in today's video we have a little bit of a problem. Today I have a playstyle for the sword and shield that I would like to use to highlight a lesser known technique with the weapon. However, no matter how hard I tried to showcase this technique, I would keep killing the Demo Rathian without hardly getting a chance to show it off. That said, I do think that this particular setup does still add a decent bit of variety to how the weapon is normally played, so I think I can still make a pretty cool video on it. Let's start this time by showcasing the build I am using which will lead into what we are trying to do. Here I have the lovely ninja sword because this thing is just too dang good and it is super easy to build around. For our general damage skills we are running attack boost, crit boost, and bludgeoner which should already give us some serious power. Now for a build specific skill we have offensive guard. This skill gives us a lovely 15% damage boost when blocking an attack with good timing. And that brings us into our playstyle concept. We will be running a guard focused playstyle to keep this skill active as often as possible. Now let's quickly bring up the guard skill. If we are blocking a lot then we may want this to reduce the impact we take. The amount of this skill that we will want may depend on a few factors so we will discuss this further in the video. Finally as a bonus throwing in some slugger can be fun to increase the KO power of a fair amount of our moves. For our switch skills I have a few recommendations, although I could also see some of these coming down to your preference. In the first slot we have the hard basher combo versus the drill slash combo. If we compare these moves on the dummy we can actually see that the drill slash deals more damage. However I would likely choose the hard basher combo because it can output some serious KO damage. That said, if you would rather run the Drill Slash because of its increased damage or maybe because it just looks really cool, go ahead and suit yourself. In the second slot we have the Advancing Slash versus the Sliding Slash. For this choice I have to say that I mostly just stick with the Advancing Slash because I'm used to it. The Sliding Slash gives you quite an easy way to become airborne, but I'm more used to the standard ground based combos for the Sword and Shield. Also as a note for this playstyle, we will want to be doing a good amount of guarding and staying on the ground does help a bit with that. Of course if you are a master of the Sliding Slash then once again by all means feel free to run with it. Finally in our third slot I'm not going to let you have a choice. The Metsu Shoryugeki is just too strong and also happens to be the perfect fit for our playstyle. The alternative Windmill is a fine move that has more of a defensive focus, but the Shoryugeki just does so much more for us that we can't pass it up. We will talk details on this move later in the video. Okay, now let's jump into the core things to know for this playstyle. For starters, let's cover the use of the offensive guard skill. Although many never use it, you can in fact block with your shield by holding ZR. Now if we just hold this and wait for an attack to hit us, we will just block the attack normally. However, if we wait until just before the attack will hit us, then quickly press ZR, we will gain this red aura that tells us that we have received an attack boost. 
If we currently don't have any extra attack boosts, then we can see an attack up buff above our health bar as well. Timing this, we can see that this buff lasts about 12 seconds. Every once in a while, it can be good to just block an attack like this to refresh your buff, but we will now cover a fancier way to trigger it. When you are guarding with your shield, you may know that you have two options. First, if you press X, you will perform a Rising Slash. You may know this move as a classic combo starter. However, the lesser known move is to press A while guarding. This performs a Guard Slash, which allows you to attack while keeping your shield up. New in Rise, the Guard Slash now comes with this fancy blue aura. So what does that mean? Well, it turns out that if you are hit during this blue aura, you will be able to perform an instant counterattack. As you can see, when attack hits us in this stance, we will follow with a quick shield bash. However, it doesn't stop there. After this shield bash, you can press X to go straight into a perfect rush, which is one of your bigger damaging combos. In addition, you can also press A after the shield bash, and this will jump straight into the second hit of your perfect rush. This gives us two useful options. If you counter a move and need to reposition, press X to do the full perfect rush. Alternatively, if you want to stay right where you are, you press A to jump right into the middle of the combo. Now you may have noticed during all of this, my offensive guard skill hasn't been triggering for any of these counterattacks. This is because the act of countering is not considered blocking an attack at the last second. For all of these demonstrations, I had my shield up well before the attack connected with me. This however doesn't mean that we can't both counter and trigger the offensive guard. If we want to do both, then we will need to put up our shield and counter right before an attack hits us. When not blocking, we can quickly press ZR and A to raise our shield and counter in a single fluid motion. If we counter an attack in this way, we will be able to trigger Offensive Guard, which is perfect for getting the most damage out of our follow-up perfect rush. Alright, now we need to have a discussion about the downsides to our counter. As you may know, the shield for the Sword and Shield is extremely weak. When we block most attacks, we are sent flying. Now if we want to counter an attack, we need to be able to stand our ground when blocking an incoming attack. Unfortunately, there are many attacks in the game that do not let us do this. Let's take Rathian for example. We can counter a few of her attacks such as her Bite, Tail Whip, and Roar. However, no matter how hard we try, her fireball and a backflip will always knock us back. So part of being able to use this move well is to know what attacks from a monster can be countered. I think now will be a good time to discuss the effects of the guard skill, and here is when things get a bit weird. So when it comes to the guard skill, this normally allows us to take less knockback when blocking attacks. Perhaps this might just let us counter larger attacks, so let's test. With our training dummy, the stomp move is an attack that we can't seem to counter, so let's start adding some guard skill. Aha, with guard level 5, we can finally counter this move. Alright, so in theory, this skill should let us counter more attacks. Against Rathian, let's test to see what new moves we can counter. Well, this is awkward. Even with 5 whole levels of guard, I can't find a single new move that I can counter. Now, this doesn't mean that having guard is useless. I think that the amount of guard you want to run might depend on the monster that you are fighting. Perhaps Rathian was a bad example for us, so it could be that there are some monsters that have attacks that are only counterable with guard level 5. Other than that, I would say take as much guard as you feel would be enough to keep you safe so you can block attacks and trigger your offensive guard. Okay, with that science out of the way, let's talk about one more important move. 
We are talking about the Silkbind Switch skill that I said we need to have, the Metsu Shoryugeki. If you play this weapon normally, you are probably well aware how awesome this move is, but let's review. The Silkbind is activated with ZL plus A, and when you use it, you will do a sweet uppercut straight out of Street Fighter, and then you can follow up with a downward shield bash with A or a plunging sword thrust with X. It just so happens that this move also works as a counterattack. At the very start of this animation, you are able to block an incoming attack. If you do this, the uppercut will become far more powerful, dealing multiple heavy hits. And here's the icing on the cake. This counter is also a guaranteed trigger for your offensive guard. Adding the 15% damage on top of this already powerful attack is huge. With combined use of this move and normal blocking and countering, we will be able to maintain our offensive guard buff for quite a good portion of the hunt. And it looks like it is demo time. In terms of the techniques I have covered for this video, I was quite light on the weapon basics. If you need additional instruction on the core combos for the weapon, I would once again recommend one of the many base tutorials for this weapon. Heck, I probably need to watch one of these tutorials myself, because I still play this weapon in a rather old-fashioned method, and I am unsure what combos are considered optimal in Rise. Our focus for this demo will be the usage of our counterattacks to try to maintain offensive guard for as long as possible. I will put a timer on the screen to keep track of how long it is active. Alright, Rathian's Roar is an easy guaranteed counter, so let's make sure to not mess this up. After our counter, we opted for the in-place perfect rush, which keeps us right at the head. And here we have the Shoryugeki stealing the spotlight. I have to say this move is great already, but against Rathian it is unfair. Against Rathian's backflip, it is an almost always guaranteed knockdown. This is also the reason I was hesitant on this video, because we have all this focus on our counter slash, and then the demo is just, oops, all Shoryugeki. Against Rathian's Tail Whip, I specifically chose to use the X button Perfect Rush counter. This moved us forward under her body so we wouldn't get hit by her follow-up Tail Whip. One very important thing to master with these Perfect Rushes is to not get greedy with them. A full Perfect Rush is quite the commitment and leaves you wide open. Oftentimes the best course of action is to roll out of the way after a few hits so you don't get punished. And don't mind me here, I'm just taking Rathian for a walk because I know that Bishatan is going to be showing up momentarily. After so many Rathian hunts, I know exactly what monster spawns will result in interruptions. By the way, did you know that you can end the perfect rush in two ways? With the A button you will do a spinning attack that keeps you in place and ends the combo sooner. With X you will do a lunging stab that makes you jump off the monster. I saved that one for when I have a big opening. You may be wondering how I found myself in this situation.
Karathian, please, when you do this many backflips, I have no choice but to punish you. I just want to show off the counter more. Oh no, Rathian, you had to have learned your lesson by now. Ah, well, that was over quick. From our timer, we can see that we were able to keep our offensive guard up for almost half of the time we were hunting. We could have even been more bold with our guard and chosen to block attacks like Rathian's fireballs. This would have dealt us more chip damage, but it would have allowed us to keep offensive guard active for even longer. So in summary, this weapon is just really strong in general, but we can still use this counter focus to slightly change the feel of the weapon and maybe overall make it even stronger. This will do it for the video, so thank you all for watching. If you're still here, allow me to take some time to plug my Discord server. Right now, this is just a fairly small server where I and a few other folks are hanging out. But going forward, I would like it to be a place where people can come to talk about my content as well as just hang out in general. One of the first things I have added is a channel for suggesting new playstyles for these videos, so if you have any ideas, feel free to join the Discord to share them. If you want to join, I have updated all the descriptions of my videos to include an invite link, so just take a look there to find it. Anyways, that'll basically do it for now, so once again, thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.